Hello and welcome to Red Life and I hope everybody who is watching this is having an awesome day. Me, I'm doing good. No complaints whatsoever. Now I do have some red hot news for you today. In our first topic of the video, Amanda Dupont responds to Jup Jup's mother. So media personalities Amanda Dupont and Maschaba Kumalo who both accuse musician as well as TV presenter Molemo Morohanye aka Jup Jup of sexual assault have come out and dared his mother aka Mama Jackie to bring it on after ignoring her demand for an apology. So last week we actually did a story in which Mama Jackie demanded an apology and a retraction of all the allegations that were made by the scheme some actress and the former Metro FM host that Joop Joop had raped each of them about a decade or so ago. Now Amanda Dupont who said that she was in a relationship with Joop Joop for two years made the allegations on social media in response to his uh, remarks on the Mac G podcast earlier this month. So fast forwarding to now, it seems like the two women's lawyers have each advised them to ignore Mama Jackie's demands contained in a letter that was served to them via WhatsApp and email on Wednesday of last week. Now apparently their lawyers said that after consulting with a prominent advocate on the matter, they were finalizing criminal as well as civil cases against Joop Joop. The lawyer said we can confirm that we have received the letters and we will respond in due course, but we cannot comment on the other two cases right now. They went on to say that we will issue a statement once our clients have made their statements under oath with the police and we have also issued our court papers. The lawyers also went on to say that by not responding to Mama Jackie's letters of demand, her clients are basically inviting her to take those so-called further steps that she said she would do in the letter. But yeah, focusing more on Amanda Dupont in that 17-minute video that she posted on social media, she said that she had not been able to speak out about the alleged rape at the time because she had been afraid of Jup Jup's mother. Amanda also alluded in the same video that Jup Jup's mother had allegedly siphoned money into her personal account that was donated to a charity by American media mogul Oprah Winfrey and also accused Mama Jackie of using Omoti. When it comes to Maschaba Kumalo, she came out in support of Amanda Dupont claiming that Joop Joop had raped her at Mama Jackie's home in Naturana, Johannesburg more than a decade ago. So in response to all of this, Mama Jackie did give the two women 48 hours to retract their allegations and apologize to her. She threatened to take the matter to court if they did not heed her demands. But like I said, the ladies lawyers have advised them to not respond to that and invite her to take those legal steps. What do I always say? Sometimes not responding is actually a response. But yeah, before we move on to the next topic, please do me a huge favor. If you do enjoy the content here on Red Live, do give this video a huge thumbs up. It does help out a lot. And also, if you are new to the channel and haven't subscribed, do hit that red subscribe button and hit the bell notification to be notified of future uploads. Our next topic, Heavy K shuts down claims that he is a deadbeat dad. So Heavy K recently made headlines after his ex-wife Ndombi went on a rant on social media accusing him of being a deadbeat dad and dodging to pay Bapheld. Now ever since he was embroiled in this nasty Bapheld drama, Heavy K has actually been very mum on the matter. But he has finally decided to silence his baby mama by showing love to his children. Now taking to his social media account, Heavy K celebrated the birthday of his son who turned a year older yesterday. So Heavy K posted a couple of pictures of his sons and captioned them, I can't believe that we have spent five years together. I feel like you came to my life a few months ago but now you are a grown kid and you have proved your smartness again and again and I love you with all of my heart boy. Fam, help me wish my son Yuri a happy fifth birthday. Definitely, so definitely happy belated 5th birthday to Heavy K's son, Yuri. Now of course the reports are coming out with titles such as Heavy K is shutting down claims that he is a deadbeat dad. Now of course all of this like I said stems from an uh, Instagram rant that Ndombi actually went to Heavy K's ex-wife where she said things like you have a disabled 6 year old boy that still is unable to walk, who doesn't have a wheelchair, who doesn't have any medical coverage and that time all you ever send is 5k. They have a nanny that needs to be paid, their school fees, transportation, medical needs, food, who do you think pays for all of that? Now not to be on Tombi's side or anything like that but uh, going through the pictures that Heavy K posted I still did not see a wheelchair in any of those pictures. 
But moving right along from that, uh, she also posted something that is actually quite interesting. She wrote, you have been nothing but toxic from our past relationship till this very day you are toxic. Co-parenting with you is one of the worst experiences I am currently going through. It's a constant battle and it is sad because I've never seen this one coming. You have always loved your kids and always took care of them like a dad should. But ever since the year 2019, ever since we parted ways, you kind of parted ways with your boys too. All they have now become is PR for your brand. Now that last statement, you know, all that they have become is PR for your brand. I mean, can you call a father wishing his son a happy fifth birthday a PR spin? As well as him asking his fans to wish his son a happy fifth birthday? Is that PR? I mean, I will leave that one for you guys to, you know, comment down in the comment section down below. Our next topic, DJ Shimza reportedly to be investigated for corruption. So all of this kind of stems from Somizim Shonga's controversial cook-off event with the Department of Tourism. And to be honest with you, it seems like this particular event is causing more trouble than we actually thought in the beginning. And now it seems like the restaurant owner is the latest casualty. So according to the latest reports, DJ Shimza is said to be investigated by the Public Service Commission, the PSC, in regards to his popular restaurant hangout that is based in Tembisa. Now, as reported, the restaurant raised eyebrows when it got a 150,000 rands deal with the government to host the cook-off despite not being on the Department of Tourism's database. Now, apparently, there's also no record of the restaurant putting in a tender application for the gig. So yeah, it does seem that the plot does thicken. Now, when the actual event happened earlier this year, the Ministry of Tourism did receive a lot of backlash. A lot of people felt like the department lacked a sense of priorities as they chose to spend money on a cook-off event with rich celebrities instead of supporting those who were struggling, considering how badly that the tourism as well as hospitality industries have been hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, the then Minister of Tourism, Mamulo Kongubai, defended the event saying that celebrity cook-offs are a popular trend all over the world so yeah all of this backlash actually started when she posted the following poster and captioned it i will hosting this event with at somizi and actually request those who criticize this event to go and check celebrity cook shows which is a global trend we commit to work with all south africans in building the tourism sector Now, she further went on to say that this event is the last pre-budget event we are hosting since last week. Do you have feedback on other events that we held so that we can use this as part of the debriefing session with our team? If you didn't notice, other events also do indicate. So yeah, the last part, she's saying that this event is actually a last pre-budget event. So I'm assuming that pre-budget before, you know, COVID pandemic or something like that, even though it is May 17th on 2021. But moving right along, taking a look at the replies on social media, one user wrote, why not go to the same Tembisa and visit every local food joint and showcase their dishes and talent? How is this in any part of reviving the tourism industry? Your PR is failing you, so Mizi doesn't need the money. Another user wrote tourism industry suffered during lockdown and the minister see it best to do a cook of Libo Somizi I this country. Another user wrote, how will this event activate tourism in Mzanti? Maybe share the brief to ease taxpayers' concerns. Well, I suppose those that are waiting for the brief are still waiting for that particular brief. But yeah, moving right along, it does seem that DJ Shimza allegedly further worsened his case by stating on social media that the department actually called him and asked for a quotation of how much the event would cost. He was then given the tender with no mention of an application. So it seems like the Public Service Commission does not appreciate the fact that he was given special consideration while others in the same business had to apply through the right channels. So according to the report, there was a whistleblower who actually reported this via the National Anti-Corruption Hotline, which is how all of this came to the attention of the PSC officials. Now, I will say that I've also seen some comments, people saying that, you know what, the ANC is more focusing on a 150,000 rands corruption thing instead of focusing on real corruption that is happening all over the countries that is worth millions, perhaps even billions of rands. I will say this, corruption is corruption at the end of the day, and I suppose maybe Shimza might be the one that is made example of. Our next topic, Casper Nyovest changes his black McLaren for a white one. 
So yeah, ever since Casper Nieves kind of unveiled his birthday gift to himself, his black McLaren, people have been talking. Heck, we even did a story according to those, you know, reports. They claim that Nota Baloy claims that Casper Nieves actually didn't buy the car, but it's more of a promotion gig. Now, of course, we don't really know the truth. Casper Nieves has come out to kind of say, nah, he bought the car and uh, we will look at that a little bit further. But now people are kind of coming through and saying that, uh, how come Casper Nieves' car has changed from black to white? Now, all of this stems from Casper, who posted the following video of himself returning back to the country and captioned it, just got back into the country. We built this from ground up, from the roots of fame. I am not famous for being rich. I am famous for providing a good service, which is music and entertainment. The other thing I sell is inspiration. People follow me because my life story is inspiring. You are watching a billionaire in the making. Let's go get it. I have had a lot of ups and downs in my life, but this is officially the richest that I've ever been. Life is good. Ah, yes, life is definitely good indeed. Look at that. Uh, look at that McLaren, man. Look. I'm going to put up my hands and say that, you know what, Casper Nieves is definitely selling some inspiration out there. I'm not really listening to all of the hate and all of the stuff. I'm just looking at what he is posting and just, you know, putting it in that bubble of Casper is posting this. And uh, to be honest with you, it's inspiring. But yeah, like I said, Casper Nieves had a black McLaren when uh, he unveiled it to us last week. Now it is white. So people are asking how, how come? When's the Galan? How come did it change color? So apparently Casper Nieves actually wrote the following in reply. There's a screenshot, so do take it with a pinch of salt. It can be edited and things of that nature. But yeah, Casper replied, it was changed and took the white to match my fleet. It's a long story, but yeah, I bought the white. It wasn't ready for collection because they had to run an upgrade on it. I was mad because I wanted it a day before my birthday, so I took the black. Then I saw the white and wanted the white again. Both cars are are the same price and because i paid cash we just changed insurance and paperwork so the black is back on the floor and on sale you can also check it on the daytona site and the auto trader so yeah over there casper saying that uh, he got the black because the white was not ready and uh, i will say this you know i kept it to myself but now nah, i can't say it. you know i kind of thought it odd that casper would get a black car because most of the cars that you see casper have is, is white but yeah i mean he does go on he wanted to match his fleet makes sense personally i'm buying it so far and another thing that he says over there he paid cash none of this promotion thingy get cash he paid cash and uh, he says you can also check it on the Daytona site and Auto Trader. So you know what we're going to do? We went to Auto Trader, look for Daytona, and uh, there you go. Uh, it's got POA. I'm assuming that this is the correct car, but uh, yeah, it's back on the site for sale, Onyx Black. So if you want to want to buy it, I suppose, you know, you can go buy. Casper has been in it. So you can, you know, tell your friends about that. But you know what? This was Casper's car, the one he unveiled at his birthday. I now have it. But yeah, that is basically the story with Casper Nieves McLaren changing from changing it actually from black to white. And just like that, we have reached the end of the news. Now, if you did enjoy the video, please do me a huge favor. Share it with your family, your friends, and your enemies. Confuse the hell out of everybody. And as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Real Live if you haven't. And binge watch my previous videos.